My special guest star, after a long absence, is Lynn Anderson. Lynn, welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be back around. <laughs> you know, in the, er in the early days of this show, you were almost a regular. That's it. I used to haunt you because I used to live right up the street from WSM. <laughs> and that's where we would tape it. Uh -huh. And now you... Well, yeah, I know you've moved away, and you're back in Nashville. We're, we're happy to have you at home. Well, thank you. It's nice to be back. I've been really enjoying it. Still still wearing the hats, aren't you? That's me. It's easier than fixing my hair, Ralph. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn is wearing a, I suppose that's tomato red hat. It's not a cowboy hat, though. Not a cowboy hat. Well, how would you style. describe this hat? Uh, ugly. <laughs> why, why, would you, why would you possess an ugly hat? Well, they can't all be nice. Well, I think it this looks... This is like a fedora, I guess. It's like a girl once... I once heard described as semi-attractive. Semi-attractive? <laughs> I've been described that way. Have you, you done really? myself? I wasn't yeah. talking about you, Lynn. No. <laughs> I was talking about your hat. My hat. Okay. Now, your hats were quite lovely. Semi-attractive. I know you've always enjoyed wearing hats. It's easier than fixing my hair. Is that the reason you wear them? <laughs> of course. Okay. So you can just run out of the house. Absolutely. I'm always late. I'm always running about half an hour behind myself. I assume Ro you still still sing Rose Garden. Oh yes. The uh, is this this is still the must song. Well, it's what we call a career record. Yeah, it's one of those ones that I that I make people mad if I don't sing. So I, I never have failed to sing it because I like it too. It did did awfully well by me. I can't complain. I seem to recall that when you made this record, you went in and. You made the recording without the strings, which plays such a prominent role, and they were added later as an afterthought. Yeah. Is that right? Um, well, we went in and, and recorded just like we always do, and um, had basic five or six instruments, you know, guitars and drums and bass and piano, and that was about it. And uh, everybody started raving about it being a pop hit. So at that time, if you were going to have a pop hit, you had to put strings on so they went back in and, uh, and put all these heavy strings that we hear. Yeah. Lynn, you were on this program one time, and I ask you, and I'm curious as to what you might say today, I ask you what the phrase, I never promised you a rose garden, meant to Lynn Anderson. Um, I don't know what I said then, but how I feel about it now, I, I, I don't think my attitude has changed, is that, is that uh, life doesn't always have to be exactly perfect. There's got to be a little... A little hard times to go along with the good ones. Okay, now that's a negative thought to me. And in, and uh, most songs that make people that was a, this we're talking about a big hit song. I think it's real positive, right? And but most songs that make people uh, feel good or sad or whatever are uh, not negative. I didn't. I've always liked to think to think that I sing positive songs. I. It's like saying a glass is half empty or a glass is half full. Mm -hmm. To me, I mean, I, I sent my ex, not my now ex-husband, a copy of the words to this song during our separation. I said, read these. You know, read the words to this thing, think about it. I just, I think the words to this are real positive. To me, it means, you know, you don't give up just because there's a problem. Okay, you, now you that's, that's, a, that's a positive aspect I hadn't thought about. You don't give up because there's a problem. Yeah, you deal with it. It's, it's a part of life. Everybody has to have... You gotta have problems. You know, everything doesn't always go along just like you planned it. There's always a kink in the work somewhere, and you just have to go with it. Are you telling me that the gentleman you were married to in Louisiana <laughs> did not subscribe to that? Oh well, <laughs> I don't think he'd ever had any anything uh, uh, tough happen to him in his life. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things where. Uh, uh, He'd always had it fairly easy, and, and I, I really hadn't. I, you know, I hadn't had any terrible tragedies or anything like that, but, but uh, I guess I was a little more realistic about the fact that, that uh, you know, if you have a problem, you, you work with it, you deal with it, you handle it, you work it out. Let's talk about a new record and a new career for Lynn Anderson. Well, it was kind of scary coming back after being gone for three years. I stayed home and had babies, which... Uh, I loved. Now, wait, you didn't have babies. I did, too. How many children do you have? I have three. I was uh, thinking you only had two. No, sir, I've got a baby at home. It's a year and a half. So you did Another stay home and have, three. you still have, uh, you did stay home and have babies. I certainly did. So you got to leave. I wasn't, I wasn't exactly rested. <laughs> yeah, if you've got, if you folks have children, you know exactly what we're talking about. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's a full-time job. Well, I had, had two in, you know, a little over a year, and that was... 
you know, Gray is just three, and the little girl is not quite two. So. What's her name? Melissa. And you have Lisa. Mm-hmm. Were you scared coming back? Absolutely. Is, huh? Absolutely. When you lay off making records for several years, is that uh, something that crushes your confidence? Well, um, I, I don't really know uh, how it would be for other people. For me, you know, it, it was a little scary because having done it in the way that I did, I mean, I just went to CBS and said, listen, I'm pregnant and I'm going to go home and have babies now. And it's it's been really been really nice and I've really had a good time, but I'm ready to, to stay home and be married and have my, have my kids and raise a family. And uh, I just kind of threw away what, what a lot of people in the world would give their right arm and their left foot for. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I felt like there might be a little resentment about that. I felt like, heck, I just didn't know if I could do it again. All right, I, what, is the key, what, is the, what is the key to coming back, or what did you fear the most? Oh, well, I guess rejection like everybody else. Okay. You know, I guess the first, the first problem was um, getting it straight in my own mind what I wanted to do, whether or not I really thought I could go and do it all again with the kids and, and the whole thing. It, it would mean um, uh, working with two small babies at home and, and then Lisa, who's now just turned 12, and it would mean leaving them more than I thought they should be left. and. It would mean kind of opening myself wide open to uh, to a failure. Have you? I know you've recorded hundreds of songs. Have you ever done "I'm Moving On"? No, I haven't done "Moving On." Um, I've always done my Hank Snow repertoire consists of "I've Been Everywhere." Let's talk about "I've Never Loved Anyone More." I think it's a it's a fine piece of work. There are some songs that are that are not big hits, and you just don't know why. This song, to me, was one of the best songs I've ever recorded. I still think it's a great song. Didn't come out as a single, did it? Yeah, it was it a did? single. Yeah. And then Johnny Rodriguez uh, brought it out oh, a couple of years later, and it wasn't a big hit for him either. So. You put this out as a single? Yes. Uh -huh. Golly, how am I? I think it got to top. 20 or something like and it's disgusting you know when, when a top 20 record you don't consider a hit you know i hope the new one goes to top 20 i'll be real happy but you know at that time we did not consider it a hit well i know where you're coming from because i know in talking to various artists that like merle haggard if it doesn't go all the way to one he thinks it wasn't a hit for two uh -uh, i'm <laughs> sorry it wasn't a hit that song was written by linda hargrove Linda Hargrove, who is, in fact, a good singer-songwriter here uh -huh. in Nashville. And yeah, she said recording contracts. In fact, she recorded this one, too. <laughs> it wasn't a hit for her, either. But it is, a, nevertheless, I'll stand on my other statement that this is a pretty song. Yeah, and like I said, you, you just never know what the people are going to really go out and buy. This one, to me, this is a song that I would I would buy. You know, this to me says something that I would think people would identify with, but I guess you never know what people are going to like and what they're not going to like. That is true. Yeah. They say if a man knows absolutely, he can set up shop and make a million dollars. Yeah, there'd only be one singer for sure. <laughs> what is it? What is on your shirt? It says Keystone, it says Keystone Ranch. Ranch. Where is the Keystone Ranch? It's in Colorado. What is the significance in your life, at least, of the Keystone <laughs> Ranch? Um... Keystone is a is a, a ski resort in the winter. I was there in the summer. <laughs> it's just a very nice place to kind of go and get away from it all if you can. And, and I was up there on some business with some friends. Is that where you like to to escape to? Oh, I I like to escape to a lot of different places. Do you I, do you like to totally escape? Every so often I do, yeah. No phones, no television, no newspaper. Mississippi Queen. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I like to do that occasionally. Uh, you know, you get kind of... You get kind of burned. I do with with all the all the bad news all the time. And sometimes I just as soon get away from the phone because it drives me nuts. My phone starts ringing at about eight o'clock in the morning, and it never stops until seven. But you know, pe people that are live very active lives, and I know you do, sometimes are lost when all that activity is cut off. It takes me a good day to kind of phase down, you know, and and make myself realize that, okay, I can relax now. You know, it takes me a good day to kind of get used to it. And then when I get back, you know, it takes a day or so to get back into the into the grind of, of uh, sitting there working for 12 hours at a time or something. I don't like to be totally cut off. 
I do. Every so often I really think it, it uh, clears my head out to get out in the woods or go out on a beach somewhere or just, you know, get out with a horse or whatever, just get away from everything, go up in the mountains, whatever it takes.